My name is Dr. Conrad Murray. This is part of the untold story, my story. This is the very first time I have made the statement publicly that analyzes the case that was brought against me, Conrad Murray versus the state of California. A lie unchallenged becomes the truth. If Michael Jackson was on a propofol infusion or a drip, I would be completely responsible for not monitoring him. But he was not. And here is why. And what you're doing now is what? So I'm now putting the tab back, firm this down, and placing this inside the bag. And this is the propofol bottle? And that being the propofol bottle. And then using that to support the propofol bottle like that. And does the propofol then, in this setup, continue to, uh, to drip and infuse into the patient if this had been utilized? Yes, there's no, there's no difference in the plumbing when the bag, when the propofol is suspended inside the bag. The absurd hanging contraption. Two tubings and a cut sailing bag to hang a propofol infusion, that's absurd. It comes with its own hanging sleeve. All you have to do is to pull it and place it on, a, on, a, on the IV pole. There is no reason to empty a sailing bag, cut a hole, place the bottle in it, and then to create that kind of hanging mechanism. That did not occur. Describe what you're doing right now to hang it. There's a little label right here, a little plastic label, a little, little plastic strip intended to hang this from an IV pole. And looking at people's 30, uh, does this contain the same pipe decal apparatus uh, used to hang it? Yes, this has the same decal apparatus Now, that's deception. Dr. Schaefer had his own demonstrative bottle. You saw that. He had pulled a tab. He had hanged the bottle. The DA picks up the actual evidence which was found at the scene. And he altered that evidence in the courtroom to fit their theory of hanging a drip, to try to get away from that absurd concoction of hanging it in a cut sailing bag. Now I realize that you did not see that. You just missed it again. You missed it in the trial. But that was one of my worst days. I cannot believe that in the court that we expect to find impartial and uh, uh, judicial behavior, that conduct could be so extreme by a court officer. Look at it again. This time, I want you to listen to the sound when the DA gets up and walks to the camera with his back to the camera, and he continues to pull that tab open. Describe what you're doing right now to hang it. There's a little label right here, a little plastic label, a little, little plastic strip, intended to hang this from an IV pole. Now watch the prosecutor. He's going to come, put his back to the camera, <clears throat> and he is going to and alter the evidence. Listen to it when he pops it. Listen carefully. Looking at people's 30, uh, there it is. Does this contain yeah, that's the it. He just popped it. Stick his hand to the actual evidence uh, item, to hang it. Yes, and they're so called to the side bank. Decal apparatus. Right there and then, Dr. Yes. Schiff is going to help him by trying to replace that, eye, that strap on the bottle. He should not have done that. He is a witness and an expert. There's no reason to replace what was just destroyed. And this is what happened when the, when the defense team went to the sidebar. They approached the judge and said that Mr. Walgren just altered a piece of evidence, exhibit number 30, that was extremely important to defense. And the judge, before anything else, this is his answer. 
This is testimony. This is the court record, and you haven't seen that. This, these were his words. He didn't open it. Mr. Walgren, with a, very tremulous at this time, admitted, yes, 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 Your Honor, I did. As a result of this, they went into a stipulation of fact to say that this occurred. But the stipulation was not agreed on by me up till today. My defense attorney accepted the DA to make a statement saying that he did it for demonstrative purposes. It was not. It was ill intent and deliberate. This was wrong. It was misconduct, to say the least. It should not have happened. But they had to make their theory fit, and they needed a drip. For demonstrative purposes, here it is again. What was there to demonstrate? Dr. Schaefer had brought his own bottle, his own tubings, which were not evidence, demonstrating to the jury, as if it was evidence, the DA was of the thought that we did not know there was a hanging device. It was not we who did not know. He did not know. Otherwise, he may have long postulated using the hanging tap and may have destroyed it outside of court. But in order to change the absurdity of his concoction, which made no sense. What is tampering? You can read it yourself. But I'll just touch a few things. A person who commits a crime of tampering with evidence, when he or she knowingly alters, conceals, falsifies, or destroys any record, document, or a tangible object with the intent to interfere with an investigation possible, proceedings by the federal government, that is punishable. Prison, not more than 20 years, a fine or both. What's the punishment for prosecutors? He becomes a judge. Anyone else would have been in jail. Uh, the, the milky white substance in this area here, and then at the bottom of this particular portion of uh, device here. OK, so you've indicated uh, a milky white substance in this bottommost apparatus on your diagram. Correct. And you also recall uh, seeing some white substance uh, above the apparatus, which would actually be, I guess, in the saline bag, to your knowledge? Correct. OK. And inside of this, then, was an actual uh, bottle or vi glass vial? Yes, sir. OK. And was that? Uh, essentially resting at the bottom of this bag? Correct. Okay. On the inside. On the inside, yes, sir. So Alberto Alvarez points out with the pointer exactly where he saw the substance, as you just saw, indicated on that drawing. Look at this. And at an earlier date, uh, earlier than today, um, did you uh, attempt to draw a picture of the kind of the general shape and structure of that bag? Yes, I did. Okay. <coughs> Can I have a, uh, a diagram that's previously been shown to defense counsel? May this be uh, 27 <coughs> for identification? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. You're Sir, showing you... Could we dim the lights, please, Your Honor? Sir, showing you uh, what's been marked, People's 27. Is that uh, your drawing? I'm embarrassed to say, but yes. <laughs> uh, the uh, topmost part of that diagram, this uh, basically uh, large rectangle, does that represent the actual uh, saline bag itself? Correct. Okay. So he laughs. He makes the jury laugh in the courtroom. He's embarrassed at his own drawing. Was it his drawing? Let's look at that. As part of that diagram, this uh, basically uh, large rectangle, does that represent the actual uh, saline bag itself? Correct. Okay. And then it comes down to the bottom here uh, where the saline bag terminates, and you drew this, uh, this apparatus or this device on the bottom of that saline bag. Is that, does this drawing accurate what you saw? Yes, sir. This drawing was not accurate 
to what Alvarez saw. Alvarez never saw such a bag hanging. This drawing was requested and produced at the request of, you will see, just watch. Mr. Alvarez, um, we have met before at the preliminary hearing. You recall that? Yes, sir. Today, you, uh, you've shown, a, a picture was shown to the jury. It's titled uh, People's Exhibit Number 27. Let's take a look at it. And you were saying it's, uh, it's your picture, you drew it, and you did a poor job. Is yes, sir. Right? When did you draw this picture? I'm sorry? When did you draw this picture? Um, I believe it was uh, uh, back when we were supposed to start the trial. Um, I think it was May. So, Alvarez saw this drawing for the first time just about two years after Michael Jackson had passed. The very first time he saw the drawing was in May, prior to us starting the trial. Alberto Alvarez's detailed drawing of Exhibit 27, the one that he had the jury laugh about, his drawing, does not, did not happen. He was brought to Walgreen's office with the evidence items. And the police, the detective testified that when Albert, Alberto Alvarez was showing these evidence items, he did not recognize any of them. But he drew the bag for David Walgren after Mr. Walgren showed him the bag and asked him to, draw, to redraw the bag in detail. It was then placed into evidence, the same bag that he's pointing out to where he saw the white milky substance. Guess what? No milky white substance was found in any such bag that Alvarez saw. The same bag that he said that he took down with his bare hands from the pole. He was excluded completely by fingerprints. Nowhere was Alberto Alvarez's hands or fingerprints found on any item discovered at the scene. He held it was the bag. On the, on the little hook of the IV stamp. Well, let me stop you right there. It was a curly hook, right? That's correct. Is that what you're saying? That, that's what I'm saying. All right. And I proceeded to grab it from the top, and I took it out, out of the hook, and then I grabbed it with one hand, and I dropped it in the blue bag that he instructed me to. You just saw that you used both hands. Correct. You did use both hands. Yes, sir. The finger... I mean, you indicated for the record both hands at the very top most portion of the bag. And, yes, <coughs> you didn't wear any gloves, did you? No, sir. You saw Alberto Alvarez held the bag with both hands, but you also saw him trying to distance himself as far as po away as possible from that bag. No gloves. No fingerprints on anything and I would underscore anything. Alberto Alvarez was not telling the truth, and this was all fabrication. This was not right. I live to right this wrong.